но так как в связи с срочным изменением нам не нужно переиграть всю программу, поэтому вместо одного меня будут поступать еще другие коллеги. Это консерватория Ярмарка, которая является директором института материалов для электроники и буддизма. В системе, которая предназначена для Ярмарка, спросили в основном Гаммарченко, что на русский, скорее всего, наиболее адекватно нет в Министерстве национального и советского науки. Это некая организация, которая является аналогом нашей Академии наук, но он более подробно расскажет в этой структуре. И профессор Лаура Кистурино из университета Божьи Гирма, который является внештатным сотрудником нашего института в Парме. И каждый из них расскажет о научной активности, более или менее связанной с активностью лаборатории Великолевой Сибирии. Соответственно, лаборатория электронной сервиса. Наша лаборатория существует чуть больше года. С, на данный момент нами опубликованы 8 статей в новых индексированных в ведущих изданиях. Эта цифра, безусловно, гораздо выше, чем цифра, которую сегодня приводила Русская лаборатория, но вот извините на внимание, что все, которые выдавали с аффилиацией КФУ электронный синапс, были начаты и поняли в печать с июля 2014 года. Поэтому, в общем, с моей точки зрения, показатель достаточно серьезный. Мы организовали три симпозиума в рамках интернациональных ведущих конференций. Ну, вот, в частности, например, я член конференции, организованной в рамках Европейской материал Research Society. На конференции присутствовало порядка полутора тысяч участников. То есть это, в общем, ведущий европейский канал по данному направлению которые существуют в Европе. Ну, сделал несколько докладов. Так вот, я не знаю, насколько это важно. С августа этого года наши лаборатории присвоены статус КФУ РАСА. РАСА – это ассоциация русскоговорящих ученых, работающих за рубежом. Причем, опять-таки, не знаю, насколько это важно. Меня ввели в правление этой организации и ротация Руководство организации произойдет в январе после Нового года. Мне предложен пост президента европейской части этой ассоциации. Может быть, мои коллеги да, да. из администрации здесь скажут, насколько это важно, потому что, в принципе, этого сделать мне совершенно не хочется, потому что от науки это отогнать очень много времени, но если это важно, то это можно сделать, и следующую конференцию раса можно организовать в Казахстане, опять-таки, если это интересно. И еще одно важное, в общем, достижение, то, что в данный, в этом году, была подписана, был подписан, была подписана программа о совместной интернациональной аспирантуре. И так как экзамены в аспирантуре закончились меньше месяца назад, я с радостью должен сказать, что, с радостью должен сказать, что мы вошли в эту программу, с нерадостью должен сказать, что у нас есть всего одна аспирантка э, Регина, э, которая является аспиранткой э, как КФУ, так и Парамского университета. Э, в принципе, э, на самом деле, э, Сальватор в своей лекции, э, помимо всего прочего, э, расскажет о круге задач, которые решаются в нашем институте, в частности, и в рамках этой аспирантуры, и э, молодые люди. Я всех молодые аспиранты, я всех призываю поступить помимо казанской аспирантуры в нашу аспирантуру. Процедура такова. Вы защищаете две диссертации, то есть одна диссертация защищается два раза. 
здесь по-русски, там по-английски. В результате чего вы получаете удостоверение кандидата наук здесь и PHD там. Значит, здесь перечислено, я буду очень кратко, на самом деле, потом мои коллеги расскажут более подробно отдельные этапы нашего развития. То есть активность лаборатории за этот год свелась к следующим направлениям. То есть первое и второе направление, а именно электронные аналоги, приборы, которые в электронных цепях могли бы имитировать работу синапсов в нервной системе животного человека, это как бы стартовая точка данной лаборатории. А также усложнение этой активности – это создание нейроморфных систем, создание стахастических систем, которые, ну, скажем так, в очень грубой форме могли бы представить мозг новорожденного существа без всяких прошивок, то есть тот мозг, который можно обучать. Вот об этих двух направлениях я очень коротко расскажу в моем докладе. Далее, это интеллектуальные средства доставки лекарственных препаратов. То есть мы не занимаемся в нашей лаборатории разработками активного вещества. Но помимо активного вещества, то есть идеальное лекарство, идеальный контейнер лекарства должен обеспечить две функции. Подобно стратегической ракете, он должен доставить, то есть он должен иметь две системы наведения. Грубая система наведения должна доставить лекарственный препарат в область риска. Точная система наведения должна прикрепить его в пораженный участок, пораженный участок либо участок, который наиболее сильно подвержен риску. А далее должна включиться система активации. Система активации в идеальном случае, э, то есть контейнер раскроется, как только возникло заболевание. То есть он сидит и ждет. Э, в, э, в ряде заболеваний, в случае ряда заболеваний, это возможно. Например, э, артрит. Э, и э, мы сделали работы, когда капсулу мы покрываем коллагеном, э, и присутствие ферментов, которые э, организм вырабатывает э, при заболевании, разъедает оболочку, внутри которой содержатся вещества, которые убьют эти носители заболевания. В ряде случаев это невозможно, тогда активация происходит за счет некоего внешнего воздействия, внешнего воздействия, требования внешнего воздействия, то, что оно должно оказывать как можно меньше побочных эффектов на весь остальной организм. И ну, данной работой мы занимаемся уже, в общем, достаточно давно. А то, что было сделано за этот год, и то, что э, идеи родились в рамках этой лаборатории, в рамках этого университета, э, то, что этот подход мы можем использовать не только для э, лекарственных препаратов, но и э, для программирования биохимических компьютеров. Э, биохимические компьютеры – это некое направление, некая ветвь, в исследовании сейчас, когда входными данными являются вещества, выходными данными являются реагенты. То есть это компьютер более или менее действующий наподобие живого вещества. И эти контейнеры могут быть использованы для программирования таких компьютеров. То есть основная программа, а именно какие-то вещества, энзимы, могут находиться внутри данного контейнера, а оболочка контейнера э, может рассматриваться как, ну, я не знаю, насколько вы э, хорошо знаете состояние ее в софтвере сейчас, э, в э, софтвере есть такое понятие э, Listening Event Diamond Pro, Program, э, программа демон, слушающая события, то есть э, как демоны Максвелла, она сидит и смотрит вокруг. И как только замечает, что ситуация 
требует некого вмешательства, она активирует этот продукт. То есть вот эти капсулы могут э, работать и э, таким образом. Э, частично этой проблемы э, коснется Лаура в своем докладе. Э, и, наконец, последнее – это взаимодействие с живыми системами. Тут у нас есть несколько направлений, которые мы вели э, и продолжаем вести. Э, например, э, использование интеллектуальных способностей живых веществ – Сделав их, сделав их интерфейс с электронными системами. В частности, Лаура в своем докладе коснется вопроса использования интеллектуальных способностей плесени для решения задач оптимизации, в частности, для моделирования и проложения трасс перемещения транспорта с опасными, например, взрывчатыми веществами в зонах риска. Вот плесень очень хорошо решает такие проблемы. И, наконец, работа, которая началась буквально этим летом, это работа интерфейса непосредственно с живыми клетками, в частности, химированными клетками, в которую данную работу мы начали, в общем-то, даже благодаря инициативе лаборатории профессора Киселева, данная работа продолжается. Я не буду вообще ничего говорить об этой работе, не знаю, как вы. Мы находимся в начальной стадии, единственное, что мы можем сказать, работа первые Шаги в этом направлении сделаны, и в общем, в данный момент мы изучаем наилучший состав функциональных поверхностей, на которых и нервные, химерные клетки чувствуют себя комфортно. Поэтому я сейчас очень быстро расскажу о первых двух моментах. Разрешите вам напомнить некое, в общем, фундаментальное отличие компьютера от мозга. В компьютере Памяти процессора – это два совершенно разных устройства, поэтому процессор, скажем так, думает и время от времени обращается к памяти для того, чтобы взять информацию, бросить информацию, стереть информацию. Информация в современных компьютерах играет абсолютно пассивную роль. То есть она никоим образом не меняет состояние и функциональные способности процесса. Вот в нервной системе и в мозге одни и те же клетки выполняют и ту, и другую функцию. И это принципиальное различие. Информация начинает играть активную роль. Она не просто запоминается, стирается и вспоминается, но она меняет состояние процесса на уровне синапсов, как бы она делает хардвар перемычки между отдельными элементами этого процесса. То есть информация не просто запоминается, но и изменяет состояние процесса таким образом, что он становится лучше подготовлен к решению подобных задач в будущем. Это обучение. Обучение на уровне хардвара. Это нейронные сети на уровне хардвара. То есть больше, чем нейронные сети на уровне хардвара. Вопрос. То есть таким образом для того, чтобы обеспечить электронные системы, которые позволили бы хебиевское обучение, нам необходимы электронные элементы с свойствами синапса. Есть ли такие элементы? Да, такие элементы есть. И э, здесь очень коротко. В 1971 году некто Леон Чу, рассматривая симметрии электронных цепей, пришел к выводу, что э, в природе отсутствует четвертый пассивный элемент, э, который он назвал мимристером, потому что его свойство, э, его сопротивление должно было зависеть от... Э, Количество заряда, прошедшего через э, этот элемент. 
Таким образом, это как бы напрямую электронный элемент, отвечающий обучению по правилу Хэба. Чем чаще его концевые элементы одновременно включены в процесс передачи сигнала, тем легче, тем с большей вероятностью эти два элемента будут соединены между собой. На этой гистограмме просто приведено... Как вы видите, она немножко устарела, сейчас рост еще сильнее. То есть данная работа рассматривалась как некий, некая игра ума и ничего более до, до 2008 года, когда в Nature появилась статья Хьюлет Паркет, в которой авторы, в том числе Первым автором является Дмитрий Струков, выпускник Московского университета, который сейчас работает в Калифорнии и который делал аспирантуру у еще одного выпускника Московского университета Константина Лихарева. И именно они придумали вот эту вот концепцию мемристера, концепцию экспериментального воплощения мемристера. После этой работы пошел, в общем-то, некие конференции, специально посвященные данной тематике. Как выяснилось, в принципе, они были и не первыми, и, может быть, даже и не лучшими, но, тем не менее, они первые связали процессы памяти в наносистемах с названием мемориста. То есть вот в частности, например, моя работа 2005 года, когда мы не называли прибор мемристором, тем не менее она достаточно хорошо описывает прибор с памятью. Я не вдаюсь абсолютно в детали, как это сделано. Важно, важно что активная зона нашего элемента имеет нанометровую толщину, ну, десятку нанометров толщину, и процессы, отвечающие за изменение сопротивления, связаны с процессами диффузии ионов в этой тонкой пленке. Это будет важно, когда я расскажу о работах, которые мы сделали именно здесь в течение этого года. Всего лишь в двух словах. Для того, чтобы показать, что этот прибор действительно является аналогом синапса, мы воспроизвели участок нервной системы улитки, отвечающей за ее обучение и прикормление. Ну, в общем, здесь такие, почему улитки? Потому что есть модель и потому что нужно всего два синтеза. Мы воспроизвели эту систему и показали, что мемристоры в данной сети, электронные синапсы в данной сети действительно ведут себя как синапсы. Но если мы... А, вот теперь мы э, подходим непосредственно к тому, что э, было сделано в этом году. Э, процесс создания тонкой активной пленки э, был достаточно сложен. То есть э, есть некий такой метод ламинюра бложек, который я не буду э, пересказывать, но он сложен, медлен э, и э, требует э, специального оборудования. Поэтому здесь у нас этого оборудования не было. Поэтому мы решили попробовать найти другой простой способ, который позволил бы достигнуть ту же самую цель. Этот способ свелся к тому, что пленки мы делали методом так называемой полиэлектролитной самосборки, который называется также метод Layer by Layer. Опять-таки, я думаю, что я уже... Говорю больше, чем я думал, но э, способ очень простой. Э, два оборудования, это два бекера с растворами. И э, с помощью этих двух бекеров с разрешением по толщине в один нанометр мы в состоянии создать любую э, молекулярную структуру. Безусловно, это будет статистическая молекулярная структура э, с нечеткими границами, но для наших целей это э, совершенно подходит. Мы сделали пленки, исследовали их электрические характеристики. Очень важно, что пленки, созданные таким образом, не требуют дополнительного допирования. И это очень важно, когда мы делаем интерфейс с живыми существами. Потому что допирование – это, как правило, обработка кислотой. Вот в 
случае тех пленок, которые я делал э, в прошлом, допирование было необходимо. Э, и если на данной подложке была выращена какая-либо, даже плесень, живое существо, э, допирование могло убить. Что допирование? Допирование, я говорю, э, в данном конкретном случае это обработка кислотой. Э, либо э, в жидкости, либо в парах. Вот. Использование данного метода, данный метод это чередование полимеров. И, э, скажем так, один полимер это проводящий полимер, а другой полимер мог содержать, не мог, а содержал э, кислотную группу в цепи, которая как бы совершенно не уходила в окружающий раствор, но допировала э, нижнейший слой. Вот, то есть мы сделали такие пленки, мы сделали их характеристики, и что самое интересное, мы сделали прибор, который, скажем так, не в числе самых лучших, но в числе, скажем, высших 20% из лучших по характеристикам. И, наконец, вот последнее, что я хочу сказать здесь, то, что, то, что я показывал улитку, это два синапса. Вы лучше меня знаете, сколько синапсов в головном мозге. Если я не ошибаюсь, здесь 14, правильно? Вот. Поэтому сделать систему, содержащую такое количество элементов традиционными подходами, традиционной микроэлектронной технологии, невозможно. Поэтому, но органика, то есть как бы и природа выбрала органику, все мы сделаны из органики. Ее основная задача, ее основное преимущество заключается в том, что она позволяет процесс смазборки. Поэтому вот в прошлом мы сделали некие структуры на основе систем смазборки, которые продемонстрировали два вида обучения подобным мозгу. То есть свежая система, если на нее произвести определенные действия обучения, вела себя как ребенок. То есть был возможен импринтинг, наведение долгосрочных связей внутри системы. С другой стороны, если эта система уже как бы не свежая, и мы воздействуем на нее другим способом, то это обычное взрослое обучение, когда возможно переучивание и, ну, скажем так, многократное обучение с короткодействующими связями. И что мы сделали за этот год здесь? Та система требовала синтеза определенных блок саполимеров, в то время как здесь мы решили пойти, ну, опять-таки, Немножко используя природные подходы, если, мы не, если у нас нет циполимеров, у нас есть только определенный набор элементов, то мы использовали пористую разветвленную систему для того, чтобы на ней сделать стахастическое распределенное соединение наших элементов. Ну, в качестве такой системы была использована губка, и, как вы видите здесь, то есть вот... Образец выглядел так, и обучение сводилось к тому, чтобы усилить один путь прохождения сигнала при подавлении другого пути прохождения сигнала. И результаты, в общем-то, вот представлены здесь. То есть до обучения проводимость каждого из этих путей, а путь он многогранный, это губка, то есть это не два провода была сравнима, после чего мы произвели действие, заключающее в ингибировании одного пути и усилении другого пути. И, как вы видите, разница в проводимости после такого обучения составила где-то порядка величины. В общем, я на самом деле говорил больше, чем я собирался говорить, поэтому свой доклад я закончу, и, э, уважаемый председатель, как мы потом ко всем вместе сделаем. Поэтому мы сразу переходим к следующему докладу. Э,
Salvatore Ianotta, Salvatore Ianotta is a director, as I told already, of the uh, Institute of Materials for Electronics and Magnetism, uh, which is the Italian uh, National Council of Research. Uh, I would say uh, he has much wider range of interests with respect to my, so I'm a, a member of this institute, uh, and therefore uh, he will show you the overview uh, of activities. Uh, I asked him uh, to concentrate mainly uh, on the biomedical related uh, branches that are in our institute. Uh, and uh, I would say, okay, thank you. Young guys and girls, uh, put your attention. He is a leader of this international PhD program. Uh, he mainly makes uh, decisions about the acceptance of PhD students. If you are interested, in such bilateral uh, certificate, uh, say, uh, candidate Nauk and PhD, uh, put your attention. Probably you will find some areas that can be very interesting for you. And if you will find something very interesting for you, you can co uh, contact me or directly here. Please. Thank you very much for the beautiful introduction. I mean, uh, maybe much more than I deserve. Uh, well, Dobredin uh, colleague, maybe. So that's uh, about all I can say in uh, in, uh, in Russian. And uh, well, I'm very grateful to have this opportunity for me and my institute to tell you about our organization and even more to tell you some stories about some of the interests that could be overlapping yours. So I am very grateful to uh, Kazibov. <laughs> I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce it right for, to give us this opportunity. And so let me tell you, before getting into this, which will be basically the, the major part of my talk, as uh, Victor uh, told you before, let me tell you very words about our organization. This is, of course, Italy, and uh, we are the Institute of Materials for Electronic and Magnetism, and we are part of the major Italian network of uh, uh, research, non-academic research institutions, the National Research Council. And these are all the institutes around uh, the sites of CNR in Italy, so you see spread it all, all over the country, even though it's a very small country <laughs> compared to Russia. But it is about 110 uh, uh, research institutes divided in seven main departments. Uh, we are part of the department bridging between uh, 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 um, uh, engineering, physics, and chemistry. And in, part, in particular, we are involved in uh, what we call material science and devices. So our main site is in Parma, which is Maybe you know because of Parmesan cheese or uh, ham or whatever, but we are uh, we think that there should be even more known about science. But I hope that that will come out somehow from my talk. But we have other sites, all of them quite nice and beautiful. We have another site in uh, in Trentino, close to the Dolomites, uh, World uh, Heritage by UNESCO, and we have uh, another couple of sites. One is in Genova and. Uh, uh, my friend and colleague Laura Pastorino is uh, from that place and we have another side at the Polytechnical Institute in Turin. So we, in this way we can manage to have a, 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 a trajectory of uh, different competencies that can integrate uh, starting from material science up to prototype device uh, preparation. This is the city of Parma. This is not a beautiful picture but just to show you that we are a little outside the city in a beautiful field area, and this is the uh, scientific uh, site of the university. Of course, uh, intellectual, real intellectuals are downtown, right? so philosopher and everybody else is there. But we have a lot of room, beautiful fields, uh, and a lot of enjoyable things there, including sports and so on. So, uh, getting into the science, this is our site there. Uh, is a six. 
2,000 square meters of labs and offices. We have uh, about 100 researchers, uh, 30 of which are young researchers and, and uh, postdocs and PhDs. And we have uh, collaboration with professors and so on. So what we do, uh, I go fast on this, but just to tell you this magnetism. Uh, our philosophy is to have uh, 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 all the different opportunities that the materials can give to you. So we start from bulk materials, very high purity, very high qualification of materials, as it was typical of uh, 30 years ago, 20 years ago. And uh, 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 many of you may know that they are as important today, even though they are less popular, <laughs> but they are very relevant for many fields of application. But we work from the nanoscale up to large scale uh, systems. And this is magnetical systems. Uh, we work then on uh, uh, extreme conditions. This is the largest MV cell in Europe. And we can work there up to 30 uh, gigapascal and 2,500 chances. So we are still in the inorganic part, making exotic structure. This is a nature paper that we published recently. Uh, I don't go into the details, I just give you enough. But of course, we like to do also exotic nanostructures. So these are just tetrapods of zinc oxide. But this is high purity uh, cadmium telluride, cadmium zinc telluride. And, and for example, we make first class uh, uh, radiation detector solid state, which are very important for scanners and so on. Actually, we have now a business starting on that. So. Uh, when you talk about nano, it's beautiful. Don't forget about matter at the bath level. This is for the students, of course. <laughs> so it's, it may be less fashionable. So we have all the, 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 the basic ideas is on the main things that we are interested in too. We have to have all the different tiles of what is relevant. So we start from the growth of the material, uh, characterization study of the properties, chemical physical properties at the different length scales. And then this, for example, is a recent achievement. Uh, we developed a, a, a new growth method based on pulse uh, electrons. And this is, uh, uh, we applied now to photovoltaics. We have now the world record in a scalable technology for thin film photovoltaics based on cheeks. So just to tell you what is our, we, uh, we like also to interface with system. Here we are interfacing a standard heating system with photovoltaics to have a, a self-sustained uh, uh, heating system. Uh, of course, we do only the photovoltaic part. <laughs> the, 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 the thing is uh, general. So we have also a little on-site in Parma, but of course there is the larger one in Turin, uh, to make prototype of devices because you want to have uh, once you make the material, you functionalize, you make it uh, with the proper uh, uh, functionalities, then you want to show to real people that works. And working means devices and systems. If you don't have that part, people say, oh, beautiful, but don't believe you. <laughs> In particular, people making uh, uh, a business out of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, science and technology. Well, this, uh, our site was the first molecular beam epitaxy site in Italy, so we have a long-lasting tradition. Uh, at that time, uh, uh, people wouldn't call it uh, 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 nanotechnology or nanoscience, but you were assembling atoms at the, at the few atoms uh, 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 level. And then the most recent part that I introduced in the last four or five years is on soft matter interfacing uh, 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 molecules with surfaces and, uh, and giving functionalities to that. Uh, and also this is just a simulation of, uh, of uh, the interaction of nanostructure with the surface embedded in water. But, and, and we do that at, with polymers, small molecules. And I'll show you a few of the experiments we are doing. We have all the, uh, the facilities to make characterization. I'll show here just one of the of the our uh, microscopy at, at the uh, we, uh, we have in the institute eight full-time microscopists and we are one of the best schools in Italy on microscopy so that's uh, to tell you uh, <laughs> at the spotty level uh, what we can do and this has been already shown by Victor that is a relevant part of our uh, um, institute at the end uh, I'll show you a few examples of the fact 
that we are willing to work in nanomedicine. I'll show you in some details a few of the things we are doing. So I don't spend much time. This is one of the last babies we had. We were uh, um, uh, in Italy funding of research is not at the best level right now, but we met, managed to have more investments. And this is a dual beam uh, uh, FASM uh, uh, focused ion beam, which is a, good, a very nice gadget very expensive, we have two full-time researchers and it's, it's used as a facility. So if anybody of you is willing to collaborate with us or if a student comes, we can use it and he can learn how to use it. Okay, uh, the other site I go very fast, this is Trento, we do a lot of things, so we do, uh, in there we have also uh, an application facility of a partner research, local research lab, and we do uh, experiments on lab on a chip type. I don't go in more details. And this is uh, Genova. In Genova, we have uh, surface science at the best levels with low temperature, STM, uh, uh, um, all the facilities to do electron spectroscopy. We work on the beam lines uh, uh, all over the place, in particular in Electra. And uh, in uh, uh, Turin, we have instead uh, a collaboration with the Polytechnic Institute with four of our researchers working there. We have the whole facility to fabricate uh, devices. So that's it, my introduction to the Institute, just to give you uh, an idea of what is the range of things. But let's focus on something that could be, I hope, more relevant to this audience. Uh, Let's start with the organic bioelectronics based on electrochemical transistor. I will talk about this and later at the end about uh, uh, the other side of the, of the, of the, of the, 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 the art materials. Uh, and again, like for bulk and nano, soft and art have different application and they can be very nicely combined. And that's uh, something that we try to do. Also, to exploit our tradition <laughs> because we have a, lot, a, a good tradition in that direction. So what we do, we do mostly biosensor for nanomedicine, I'll tell you the story. Uh, uh, we try to convolute that with drug delivery and you will hear some more later by Laura uh, in more details. Uh, let's go in what I'll tell you about these organic bioelectronics. So I'll show you very uh, fast uh, some of the application we make. This is not the whole story of what we do in the field, but I think this could be of interest to you just as a stimulating uh, uh, beginning. So what is uh, an organic electrochemical transistor? I'll show you the principle later, but it, it, my best uh, feeling, uh, I mean, this is a, 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 a kind of a field developed quite recently, even though, of course, electrochemical properties and transistors is uh, as old uh, as the, the word says, but the real story is started in 2007, 2008, and mostly of the, because of the pioneer work of uh, Mayaras and Berggren. And we have been working in that field since uh, several years now. Uh, uh, and the principle is quite simple. It's a transistor where the major difference with standard uh, uh, field effect transistor is that the dielectric role is played by the electrolyte. So you have a source, a drain and a gate. The gate is uh, uh, embedded into the electrolyte and then the dielectric, the insulation is given by the gate. So whatever it happens here uh, modulates the electronic problem. So this is what uh, you can, you may call as a ion to electron transducting amplifier. And this is why it's so important. We, I believe it will have a, lo a long lasting future in uh, interfacing the bio world. You, you, you teach me, because I'm not a biologist and not, not a medical doctor, that uh, living beings like ions, they play their, their uh, uh, major uh, 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 functional uh, um, um, uh, working principle on ions. Exchanging ions is the major thing, because they work in electrolytes. The, the, the electrons have uh, not a long-lasting life in, a, in an electrolyte. So what happens here? You have three ways to functionalize this guy. You have the gate electrode. You, you, have a, you can choose different materials, from polymers to metals. You have the electrolyte. Whatever chemistry you activate there, 
will be a way to, to, to select or enhance some reaction or another. And um, I, I'm going too slow. <laughs> Uh, uh, and of course, you can functionalize, use different kind of, uh, of uh, semiconducting materials, you can functionalize that. So you have ions, and if you don't, are not careful, you see all the ions possible there, but you can become very selective working on these three major elements. Uh, so whenever you polarize the gate, the ions here will move, and we go, if you polarize this positive, and this will be uh, positive ions so will go there. This is very porous semiconductor material, and you change the uh, 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 response, electrical response. Just to give you uh, an idea of how nice are these very simple gadgets, uh, the transductance of this kind of devices is much better, even a factor 10 better than the best working graphene uh, transistor. Traffine, of course, is more popular right now, but interfacing the, 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 the bio world, these are very important. I'll tell you a few stories. How you make them? You can make them very simply. This is just an inject printing system, uh, and this was the first one we made, so it's a little rough, but you can make it also very sophisticated. This is uh, pillars. Uh, uh, um, this is a fabrication based on silicon, and you we cover that with a, a, a super hydrophobic uh, 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 treatment uh, uh, layer. And you see, this drop is your device now. And you can make these drops traveling around, and you can make them being analyzed by the electronic device. And so you have the gate, and you can. And we are now playing on the on the fabrication to make it integratable. So you can have an array of these guys, but you can make also something uh, quite more. Uh, fashionable. Uh, this is just a cotton, just a simple cotton you use for chewing. And we treat it with this uh, polymer, PLPSS, and, and in normal clothing you have also uh, silver wires, hmm? just for decoration. Many clothes, a little expensive, but uh, also normal ones. You can have wires in it. Uh, these two things are nothing unless they get wet. In this case, just uh, we measure the, the sweat of a person under athletic stress. And this, uh, this uh, uh, the results, you can measure the early stage of stress in a, in a, in a person exercise much before uh, she feels the stress. So she can recover before getting under stress. But this is a very important in cystic fibrosis and many other kind of, uh, of uh, 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 processes. The thing I this was a very I thought was one of the most stupid papers that my student wanted me to write, but in fact it got, got so popular we got interviewed by the, uh, several agencies all over the world just because simple, efficient, and possibly integratable. Well, but here I told you that you can functionalize. In this case, we did something very simple. If you use silver, you just measure salts content. But if you, instead of silver, you use uh, uh, platinum, you are not any more sensitive. This is just injection of, uh, of, uh, of a salt solution. You are not so sensitive anymore to the concentration of the salt, and you become heavily sensitive to, to adrenaline. Uh, this is just because of the oxy reduction that occurs at the platinum surface. And so you have a, another wire in the same clothing, and you can say at the same time, you're very simply, uh, if you're getting angry, or if you're getting an heart attack, or if you're getting too tired uh, uh, your body. So uh, I told you drug, uh, 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 assessing uh, uh, the dynamics of the drug delivering processes. Uh, you know the nanomedicine now is very popular. You have all kinds of carriers. Uh, but th th there is a problem, because the critical points, at least this is what an uh, expert in pharmaceutics told me, I'm not an expert again, I'm just saying whatever they told me, uh, the understanding of the dynamics of the delivery is very critical. And knowing whatever it happens, in which time, the, 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 the way you uh, switch the, the opening of the cage and so on are critical parts of the process. The understanding of the interaction with the cell. You can do it with very se several methods, but it usually are cumbersome and quite difficult. It takes time and takes different. So we say 
what we can do with our simple devices. First of all, the uptake of the, of the, of the drug. So what we did, uh, studying the processes of formation of uh, these typical uh, uh, drug carriers. We start with simple cetyl AB, dodecyl uh, AB, which are self-assembled uh, cages. Uh, and the nice thing is that depending on the concentration, the, the assembling could be uh, uh, quite different. And distinguishing between these different things is complicated. We need a real sophisticated experiments. Uh, what we did, we measure the formation of these guys with our, these are just the response of our transistor. I put too many possibly uh, uh, different uh, 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 responses, but this is as a function of the concentration and this is the correlation with the formation of the different species. These things can become very involuted depending on the, on the electrolyte you are uh, them preparing them. The sensitivity is the one you want from that point of view. Uh, the principle is simple. When these uh, molecules are not assembled, the charges are there, but they are not uneven. They are balanced in the same little molecule. When they assemble, they show the hydrophobic phase in the inside and the hydrophilic on the other side, and they get charged because you have a surface charge. And this is what happens. This is the surface of our sensor. You see the change of color corresponds exactly to the doping, the doping due to the ions getting into the, 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 the polymer. Well, to show you that you really can become uh, uh, electrically sensitive to the different stories, this, you see the full circles, the full uh, symbols and the empty symbols correspond to uh, uh, spherical and warm light. Uh, uh, um, you can distinguish them very nicely. And actually, we have evidence that you can distinguish also when they get more involved than just being. Uh, uh, um. So, first step, we know how to, to treat the cages. This is uh, another example, which is very important because uh, uh, liposomes are a system that are probably the most established in, uh, in, uh, in drug delivery and also in cosmetics. Uh, we worked with Son Vico, is uh, uh, one of these professors in pharmaceutics in, uh, in Parma, and they developed a special type at 200 nanometer size uh, uh, system that can go through the, the stomach without being uh, uh, attacked by the, the acidity. And so we wanted to know what, uh, what we could see, and in particular, what could be uh, uh, the dynamics of, of, uh, of the composition of, the, uh, of, the, um, of this kind of liposomes. And this is just the, uh, these are the parameters of our transistor. This is the voltage gate source uh, voltage, and this is just the response of the amplified uh, current. And you see that we can go easily down below 10 to minus 7 milligram per milliliter, which is the real uh, um, region where they are interested to study the processes. And this is the real time dynamics. So this is the turning on of the transistor, and this is the injection of controlled quantities of the liposomes. And you see that it's easy to go down to 10 to minus. I say easy because we didn't work hard to optimize the sensitivity. And this is just to tell you a shortly a story. This is the turning on of the transistor here, the injection of the liposome. This is their uh, depletion because they get open and you see the signal going down. Then you inject the new ones and so on. Even though you see the, 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 the absolute values depends on many factors, the, the dynamics is clearly resolvable. Well, in this uh, ideal steps towards the, 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 the study of the dynamics of drug, uh, uh, um, drug uh, uh, processes, drug-related nanomedicine, uh, you want to see also the, the drug itself. Doxorubicin is a, is a typical chemotherapeutical system, uh, one of the standard ones, that's what I've been told. Uh, you see, this shows you the, the, the precision of the measurement. You see, these two curves, you don't see two curves, but they are two they perfectly overlap. And doxorubicin is changing from 0.1 molar to 1, 10 to minus 4 molar. So doxor, you don't see doxorubicin, just because it's not charged. And we are a charge detector. So it's quite reliable if you don't have charges there. But you can work on the other point that I told you. You can work on the chemistry in the electrolyte. You just introduce a little 
uh, iron salt there, and, and you get the sensitivity which goes again down to 10 to minus 7 molar, 10 to minus 8 molar, easy. Uh, so now we know how to handle the cages. We know how to detect the, 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 the molecules. The important point, though, which is critical, of course, is the interaction of the cages and of the uh, uh, drugs with the cells. Uh, it's studied normally in every lab, uh, uh, bio lab uh, in the world, but is a little complicated. You need time, you need people, expert people, and so on. And our ambition was, uh, can we distinguish quite uh, uh, critical processes like apoptosis and necrosis by simple, possibly simple, uh, electrical measurements. And this will make fast and easy uh, many of the processes in the drug uh, uh, control and preparation. Well, this is what I show you now. Uh, this is all standard. Eh? So uh, the elements are about the same, doxorubicin. Uh, this is a line uh, that the, the medical people we collaborate with uh, prepare and handle. And this is the, the process. And the idea now is to make uh, a system that could work nicely uh, with living cells. Uh, PWSS, I'll show you later uh, about the, the interfacing with the uh, neurons too, uh, is very friendly with, with cells. If it's friendly with neurons, it's friendly with any cell. That's what another thing that I've been taught. But the problem is that the evolution of the system, the cell, together with the polymer, evolve together. So having reliable uh, measurements of what is the effect of the cell and what is the interaction of the cell with the polymer, the active polymer, is a mixing up that is difficult to decompose. So we designed a system where using transwell, which are standard, I've been told, in the, in the, in the field of uh, uh, cellular growth, so I don't know if you see the details, but anyhow, this is our uh, 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 electrochemical sensor. Uh, we inserted, the, okay, this is the grow media, and here you have the cells. The cells are not supposed to form a tight junction. Just, they should be the, where they like, but possibly stay on the bottom of the, of the T. Well, this helps in the, in the, in the measurements. But the important point is that we have the gate out here, not in the growing media, and we have a little layer of water, very clean water in between. So the driving force that pushes the ions from here to here is just the gradient in concentration uh, between the clean water and the growth media. And of course, it's screened by the, uh, the, the, the cells. And these are the extreme. So if you have cells in, in the system, this is the tuning of the transistor, and this is the the, the steady state uh, uh, value. And if so, you see, when you have no cells, you have this. What is this look? This look is not a drifting of the transistor. The transistor is very stable. This is uh, exactly the, the, uh, the, trans uh, the, the, the hydraulic conductance of the pores of the, of the, of the um, transfer. Well, to make a sh long story short, we made the model of the system and we measured a different concentration of doxorubicin. These are the cells, and these, are, these lobes are the meaningful data. And, and you see, at this very low concentration, the only process that you can see in the cells after 24 hours is just, uh, this is fluorescence, of course, just to have a comparison. Uh, you see there are some getting apoptotic. And you have no necrotic cells uh, being yet uh, formed. And we can detect that. If you go 72 hours, and this is the control, one micromolar, here you start seeing the, the, the reddish one are necrotic cells, and you start seeing some of them, and then at 10 micromolar you see a lot of them, and these are the corresponding electrical measurements. What is important is the comparison. If you see the comparison, our data electrical are the uh, green ones, and the, the red one are the, just the counting of the cells. Uh, and here there is a difference, and this difference is real. Just because the counting, counting uh, apoptotic cell is much more difficult than counting necrotic. If you compare instead with the, uh, 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 the viability MTT test, you see that the two curves match perfectly. 
and of course you you can uh, you you see right away how different is uh, the the amount of time the cost and the in the reliability of the method i say reliability because counting cells i realize uh, is a human process <laughs> very often and so uh, uh, the the statistics could be sort of tiring well in the same direction we interface we we we, are, we, are, we started to to work in the interface with neurons this is a paper we just submitted uh, uh, a few weeks ago i don't know if it is clear but this is the the growth of uh, unfortunately you don't see the bluish cores and so on this is uh, the growth of neurons on uh, uh, this is a, a comparison uh, it's su su supposed to be a standard uh, support for growing uh, uh, neurons and these are our pedal PSS the important outcome of this uh, paper first of all is the uh, 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 we measured also the uh, uh, action potential the firing of neurons and they look very alive and very well uh, uh, settling on the on the on the pedal PSS but what is also important then managing on the different uh, 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 concentration of dopants uh, we could also deplete the growth of glias with respect to neurons. So it's supposed to be quite a nice system to, to, to work with neurons. And now we are, of course, working on the interaction and on the uh, development of uh, 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 electrodes to measure different processes with neurons. Uh, this is just pictorial. Uh, this is uh, uh, measurements done with a microscopy. I don't know if you see it, but the neurons stay there quite nice. That's the, the, the meaning of it. Uh, they proliferate and they do whatever <coughs> they are pleased to do. Uh, in this direction of going towards electronic interchange, by electronic signaling and so on, we also made an experiment. Uh, you will see more later by, by Laura about this. Uh, 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 this is, a, uh, of course, uh, you know, polycephalum uh, polycephalum is a, is a cell uh, with the more uh, more cores uh, that proliferate easy, uh, so it's not as difficult <laughs> as the neurons are. But it was a nice playground to see if we could uh, interface it uh, to see the proper electrical properties. And we managed to work uh, inside the cell and using the inside of the cell as the uh, uh, electrolyte of our transistor. So this transistor is working with the the, 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 the electrolyte inside the cell as the medium and so you can study directly whatever processes are happening inside the cell and the cell in this case does not die and is quite nice so it works as a real transistor and what is more interesting and you can make the, this is what uh, uh, the story about memory system that Victor told you the important thing is that at the end this guy, uh, that is the cell, which is yellow here, depicted on making the transistor with the cell operating, you can have a memristive response, which the polymer by itself does not give. And this is just because you have this effect of the membrane chain of channels that give rise to the, uh, the, the fact that you have two stable states of operation operating uh, the transistor. Well, this is just a comparison. Uh, this is, uh, you know, you can make a, a beautiful work uh, with interfacing PDLPSS with the neuronal systems. This is the work by Malaras. I don't go into the details, but this is just to tell you the story we are working at, and this is the end of the first part. So, what you can do with this guy, you know, guys, you can make beautiful uh, measurements as a biosensor. Uh, uh, relatively easy and of course very cheap but you can also de de make devices with adaptive behavior and you can uh, uh, intriguingly develop new systems so uh, our philosophy that we share with Victor and, and uh, a, a, a good part of the Institute is that in this framework of electrochemical devices based on organic systems you can think of putting together in the same technology uh, sensing, bioelectronics, and memory logic. And this is the dream we are working on, and I think it's a matter of a project that we are already been working on. Uh, ten minutes.
five, ten minutes to tell you this little story? Five. Five? Okay, so I go fast. The other side of the, of the story, we talk about soft material, polymeric, organic, what you can do with, with a, a, no, a newly developed technologies based on hard materials. Uh, why hard materials, rush materials are, are, are very important? Because prosthetics, uh, when you go into the body, you have two alternatives, as far as I understand. <laughs> Maybe this is a matter of discussion. Or you have something so biofriendly that decays in time and be, uh, is reabsorbed or just decayed and, and, and get rid of. Or you have to have something so stable that lasts for years without dealing problems. And this is the case of prosthetics. In prosthetics, you don't want to change your device every year or every two years. Uh, the threshold is at least one year, and very few polymers can give the same performance over into the body, which is a very hard environment, over more than one year. Few, several weeks, several months is easy, uh, years is difficult. So uh, we candidated together with a, a group of people in the world. This is uh, uh, the book edited by Stephen Seddon. We have uh, in the new edition three chapters written by the, our people in different groups in our institute. Silicon carbide biotechnology. Uh, I don't talk about the old story. I talk what we do in the field. And we do, uh, we, 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 we are working in this five more exciting direction. One is combined two polymers to develop retroretinal uh, uh, sensing. Of course, this is a very hard work and a lot of very brilliant people are working with very different approaches. We think there is a room for our approach. Uh, I show you a, a beautiful experiment we did. These are all doctors we collaborate with, of course. Eh? So we do the simple part. <laughs> the difficult part is done by medical doctors. Uh, cardiac cell regeneration, uh, uh, scaffolding, cytocompatibility, uh, uh, neuronal interfaces. We are working also with a company in this field. And solid deep seeded cancer treatment. Since it's a long story. I go fast and just to give you the basic ideas. Uh, again, I'm not a doctor, but a specialist in cardiology told me that uh, now, if you are lucky, you don't get a cardiac attack. <laughs> heart attack. If you are not lucky, but lucky enough, you get an heart attack and you get with a good doctor close by fast. Then you have no risk. The problem is later on because the, 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 the cells that are being, uh, by the scar, uh, re reconstructed, they have no real electrical activity. And this gives you all kinds of problems for all your life, because not having, having a part, even small, of your heart that does not respond to electric stimuli means uh, all kinds of problems. Even though soluble, in the sense you can cope with, uh, that's the real problem of heart attack today. Uh, I have been told that people have tried all possible materials available, including graphene, graphene oxide, carbon nanotubes, uh, all kinds of polymers, and the solution is not there yet. So you want to have communication between the cells on the side of the scar. The scar itself is not recoverable. Well, uh, just by chance, we, we, I knew these people. Humanitas is one of the research, best research hospitals in, uh, in, in Italy. And uh, we did this experiment. Okay, I, we used uh, uh, one of our nanowires made of silicon carbide. I, I will tell you later if you are interested how we make them. Between two cells, two cardiac cells. Uh, this is just a, a field ion beam crossing, just, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but the nice thing about this uh, silicon carbide nanowire, that they have the silicon side and carbon side, and the carbon is very friendly with the, with the, with the bioenvironment. They get into the body of the carrier cells without bothering at all the standard living mechanism of the cell. The cell don't seem to suffer. So you have a real integration. And this is just the experiment in which they excited one cell here. Here is nothing but the, the nanowire. So here and here are the red and the, and the bluish. You see, the excitation starts here. 
and then gets there. You start again and goes there. You can repeat this several times without getting always the same results, which tells you that the correlation is just is not by chance. It's not the natural firing of the two cells. And this is the statistics. You see, the statistic is, is, is almost one. So whenever you, you send a signal with, with, uh, with the standard uh, uh, electrophysiology mechanisms, that signal propagates in the cell in the exact time that is supposed to be 1.2 milliseconds. And this gave rise, they got so excited that they, uh, uh, they brought one of, I don't know if you are familiar with the European mechanism, ERC are the most difficult proposal you can make, uh, are individual uh, people claiming that they will make a Nobel Prize in a short while. The, 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 the acceptance range is around 1%, so you have to be very, very good. They propose and now it's at the second stage of evaluation. This shows you the direct, uh, you see, this is the real-time measurement of the signal being sent at the, uh, one cell and going in the other cell. Well, this is just to tell you that you can do some beautiful bioelectronics with uh, nano wirings, and silicon carbide is very good for that. And so we thought that we can go, we, we can could be very brave. Huh? So could be a very good if you make the right structure and so on. A very good light absorber can transfer electrical excitation to neuronal cell. So one of the ideas is to go into the retro retinal application. And this is very important because we have the idea that you, these are our nano wires that we grow uh, normally. The basic idea is that we can make pixels in the retro network which are made of nano wires embedded in PDLPSS, the kind of polymer I showed to you. Both of them are very biocompatible. And these are the partners of a, of a photovoltaic cell. So you have the energy coming from the light being transformed in electrical uh, uh, charge separation by the, the, the joint, the, 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 the PN junction, and getting possibly the transfer to, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, uh, neurons in your, in your brain. So prosthetics, I told you about prosthetics. The critical part is here. When you try to communicate between the sensing part and your uh, neuronal system. And we are working in this direction. We are close to the end. Uh, I, I don't tell you much of this story, but the other thing we are doing, and we great success, is the using silicon carbide, a scintillator, and, and combined with molecular system like porphyrin to develop self-lighting photodynamic therapy. This is uh, beautiful. We have now uh, written a proposal for European community. Works because we can make a, a system which combines three functionalities. So we have the, our beautiful silicon carbide nanowires. They are, this is the microscopy of it. Uh, we functionalize with porphyrin. Porphyrin does the trick of uh, 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 transforming the, uh, the, the energy uh, into single oxygen. In fact, that's the photodynamic therapy. So you can functionalize the surface. The important thing, which is the improvement in our approach, is that we use X-rays. Photodynamic therapy use visible light. And having a good scintillator for X-rays is difficult, but X-rays penetrate. And so you can use uh, uh, deep uh, cancer uh, 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 treatments. Well, the third thing, the third element, you see these little guys here, these uh, little spheres. They're, these are magnetic nanoparticles. So we are putting together in our institute all we know. Magnetists, na uh, semiconductors, uh, uh, molecules. And we make this system that seems complicated, but has three functions. Uh, the nanoparticle, magnetic nanoparticle can be activated by, by radio frequency, uh, 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 what is called uh, um, uh, mag magnetic therapy. Uh, hyper, hyper thermal magnetic therapy. Uh, you can have uh, the, the X-ray activated uh, 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 photodynamics, and you can have also the detection by NMR where these guys go because of the magnet, super paramagnetic nanoparticle. Well, uh, 
I finish, just this is the scientific, so this is the way you grow the, the beautiful guys. This is the composition with our beautiful, the, they, are, they, they are very much uh, uh, organized systems. Uh, this is the amplification effect. Uh, uh, when you irradiate the, with X-rays, this is the luminescence of the nanowires multiplied by 10. With the porphyrin, you have this uh, beautiful announcement. And this guy works perfectly. And I'll show you just the end of it. I'm finished. This is the biocompatibility. This is nice. You see the cells uh, are so friendly with, uh, with, uh, with the nano silicon carbide nanowires that just interpenetrate with no problem. Well, at the end of the story is that we went into the, uh, this is a, too much of a story. We did the experiments in, in lab to show that you have really the formation of oxygen and the X-ray. Uh, uh, this is the effect. But the important thing is that at the end that we did the in vivo experiment on the tumor in rats and we saw a, a, a strong reduction, reduction that is now confirmed at the Karolinska Institute even under standard X-ray intensities used uh, for standard uh, um, characterization of, of processes in, uh, in tumors. Well, that's the last slide. Uh, the ambition is so high that we built in Parma uh, under the directorship of my institute of myself. This is what is called the center, is a national center, Biogena P which means Center for Bioelectronics, Genomics, and Nanomedicine. We double C uh, just because it's announcing <laughs> everything. Uh, and the idea, though, uh, you know that nanomedicine is very popular. Since in Parma we have uh, one of the best groups in Europe, uh, expert in, uh, in control and therapy of pain, uh, the, the real thing is to go diagnostic, therapeutic, translational, and personalized approach to control uh, pain. In another life, I will tell you why it's so important to work on pain. Uh, OK, this is the funding. This is the PhD that already has been told by Victor. And finally, the idea is to make the collaboration with you here in Kazan as possible, as nice, and as good as possible. These are the places. This is our institute in Parma. This is the institute in Trento, the places where most of the work I showed you has been done. And, of course, these two places can be also enjoyable. Music, Verdi, tortellini and uh, good pasta, uh, good wine, nice environment. And so, I, please, if you have a chance to come over, come to visit us. And these are the real people. Yes. I mean, it's a small, but nice city.